actually, I interviewed Bill uh, Bill Gates. Uh, we had spent an hour with him in Seattle in 2016. Um, it was re- when he was rolling out his breakthrough energy thing. I got to spend, it was 45 minutes, me and Bill Gates, which was pretty fun. But I, I brought this up. I said, you know, because he's all about the new nuclear thing that will solve the world's problems. And I, yes, yes, yes. But oh, we he also- brought up nuclear? Sorry to interrupt. Oh, he did. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. So he's interested in, in one of the- Oh, he's investing heavily in, in nuclear, but he invests in everything. You know, he's got a big portfolio. Um, but I brought up a guy I met in India um, who runs a little outfit called Selco that they do really interesting, cool village to village. They're like an energy analyst will come to your house here in the States and- tell you how to weatherize your house, but they do it at the village scale. And in a village that has, um, where they're milling wheat, he'll put in a solar powered wheat wheat mill. And, you know, that's not gonna solve the world's problems, but it gives them a way to control their energy. They don't have to buy something to grind their wheat. And, and that needs just as much attention as the the things I really like too, the, the cool technologies. And and, and I, I thought I cornered Bill Gates, I was like, because he really does focus on these big wins, the big, you know, like nuclear that will make net zero completely doable. And I said, well, you know, what about nuclear, like New York City, where I was still living at the time, or near, and I said, it's got a million buildings. New York City has 1 million buildings. And in 2013, the Bloomberg government analyzed, they said, looking ahead to 2050, 75% of the buildings in New York City that will exist in 2050 already exist. We think about these brave new futures, right? Like we're just gonna like come in and have these shiny, cool passive house cities. And I, I so I put this to Bill and I said, so what's the, how do you do that? How do you how do you retrofit all those boilers, many of which were coal fired like 20 years ago, to get a zero energy New York City? And he I thought I, I kind of thought I had him. <laughs> and then he, he immediately he kind of sat back and went, well but if you have unlimited clean power coming into that city, it doesn't really matter. It's a pretty good Bill Gates impression. It was a good, it, yeah. it was a good answer. I mean, it was a good answer. Yeah. He said, oh yeah, it's a leaky bucket, but you know, yeah. pour in zero carbon energy, then it doesn't matter. But I still think we have to figure out the other part too. The That end, how do you how do you innovate at the household level, at the village level? It's much more of a distributed problem we used to think. The one, the one big change I've had in my own thinking too is, is from top down to distributed. Everything about the climate problem through the first three decades of my reporting was that the the IPCC will come out a new report, the, the framework convention, the treaty will get us on board, we'll all behave better. This, it has this like top down, you know, parent to child architecture. And everything I've, I've learned has gone the other way. It's distributed capacity for improved lives, you know, kids getting through school, women not having to spend three hours collecting firewood. And if it means propane for that household in that context, that's a good thing. So stop with all your yammering about ending all fossil fuel subsidies. And, you know, what's an America look like that has some climate climate safe energy future? Find your part in that. Don't get disempowered by the, the scale of it. There's, there's like a thousand things to do when you start to cut it into pieces. So, so it's a very different. It's not a top-down thing. You know, no one's going to magically come in and, and 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 that's that's where I think. So I I agree that everyone should try to play their their part and 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 do you know whatever they can. Uh, but I also think you know just the the sheer incentives. You know what we saw happening with uh, you know with uh, shale gas is a great example. Yeah, <clears throat> when shale gas becomes so cheap that you just stop using coal, that then you don't really have oh, to totally. convince. You know, lots and lots of people, you know, coal happened. is really bad. And it wasn't labeled a climate. No, no it, it wasn't. wasn't a climate thing. It no, was no, an energy it, thing. It was totally. Uh, and 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 the, and the point is just, you know, the power of an innovation is that you you almost don't see it anymore. It just happens. Uh, and, and I think that's really the only way we're going to fix, you know, these big problems. If you think about, you know, uh, the uh, nutrition problem back in the 60s, 70s, uh, you know, we worried a lot about India and other places. Uh, 
the solution is not worrying or the solution was not, you know, us eating a little bit less and sending it down to India or wherever. The solution was the green revolution, right? It was the fact that some scientists made ways to make every seed produce three times as much. So you could grow three times as much food on an acre. And you know, that's what basically made it possible for India to go from a basket case to uh, the world's leading uh, rice exporter. Uh, and, and, and that's how you do these things. You, know, you solve these big problems through innovation. And again, I'm not saying that, you know, we're actually arguing a carbon tax is a smart thing to do. You know, that's what any economist would tell you to do. Right. But it also turns out that it's partly, it's not going to solve most of the problem and it's incredibly politically hard to do. So it may also just be the wrong sort of tree to bark up against. You know, if you can do it, please do. Uh, but this is not the main thing that's going to solve climate. The the main thing is that we get these innovations that basically make green energy so cheap everyone will just want it. 